hang tight. We're going to get started here very shortly. Thank you. Monday, March 23rd, calling the Architecture Review Board to order. Uh, first on the agenda, so I'd like to thank everyone for dealing with the technical upgrades that we're trying to work through this afternoon to uh, accommodate uh, the current health issues. Uh, and we have a number of people uh, calling in in addition to present here at City Hall. Uh, and because of that, uh, we will do a roll call but before we do, uh, Charlie Wig is a new member on the board and would like to acknowledge that uh, and do just quick introductions. Maybe just as we go through roll call, you can see who we are. Um, so I am Joe Clark. Uh, Alderperson Savaglio is here. Jerry Jones. Jerry, can you? Hello, thank you. You're online? Jerry's on the line. Thank you. Dick Lindy, here. Pam Langan, don't think Pam is joining us. Uh, Bob Heimerall, here. And Charlie Wig, here. Thank you. And if I could have everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I, I under item 1.3, are there any potential conflicts of interest to be brought to the board's attention? Hearing none, I'd move to item 2.1, approval of the minutes from our March 29th board meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second from Dick. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Thank you. Item 3.1, our first discussion item for this afternoon is the resubmittal of the new Oscar Apartments at 1436 South 15th Street. Uh, if uh, the presentation crew could come to the podium so we can hear the microphone and so the folks on the phone can hear you also. And if you can just give us a quick update on what's changed, and we'll take it from there. Thanks. Yeah, I'm thrilled to be here seeing you all again. Wish it wasn't for revisions to this project. It was a fun field trip with my 16-year-old, a lot of good highway driving time. So, um, so the reason we're here today, if you can go to the second page of this. So we actually were at a, a fully designed 100% CD set of drawings for the project that was previously um, approved. So what has happened is since we first started working with the site, we obviously were aware of some of the geotechnical history with the bluff that used to be on the site, trying to work with the previous owner, um, trying to work with Kohler, as much of the fill was from them, and then working with Wisconsin DNR uh, through the county's EPA grant on really understanding 
kind of the history of this thing, which is extensive. So this slide is very important. So the red um, that you see on the south side of the site, the, you have an interior finer dashed line and then the exterior um, thicker dashed line. So the conclusion of everything, a year worth of this investigation was that you can't build multifamily within that red area. Um, in any other state that I've ever worked in, the local DNR, that's in uh, variance you could get. Um, all of our environmental consultants we use feel the same way. Wisconsin DNR does not like to give variances, which is fine. We, you know, um, are not begrudging about that, but it forced this redesign. So then we were at a spot where we were rejiggering the site to try to make everything work, um, which is how we've gotten to where we are today. So if you recall, the previous design had all detached exterior garages. We have moved all of the parking underneath the buildings. So all three of these buildings have fully underground, you know, 10 feet underground, um, access controlled, temperature controlled uh, parking. We lost eight units. We were at 248 before, we're at 240 now. So that is the genesis to where we've gotten. It's obviously been an expensive redesign. We've lost quite a bit of time. Um, you know, we're still working with HUD as our lender, um, and they're amicable to all of this. So you have all of the normal information in your packet that you normally would have. Um, Steve very intelligently requested that we put this document together. So you have kind of a side by side right in front of you of uh, the, the conclusion of our previous exercise, which included all of your conditions um, and approved plans to what we're doing today. Uh, we did previously have four buildings, and now we have three. If you recall, the previous plan had the one large building and three smaller buildings. Now all three buildings are essentially the big building, so there's no more of the small building. Um, otherwise, exterior facades of the building are the exact same intent of what you approved before. I brought the materials back. This is the exact same box of materials you approved before. None of that's changed. We still have 50% uh, balcony coverage facing the main roads like the city had requested and we agreed to before. Um, there wasn't question on building height and interpretation. So I think the technical detail of that's in the document. The short answer is the building is the same height as it was before, except at the ends, obviously, where we're sloping down to get the ramps into the garages. So at the ends, you have more exposed foundation, which could be interpreted as additional height. Um, our interpretation, if you do, you know, average exterior height along the linear of the building, it's with wind what we were before. Um, the other change that I believe you all would care about is previously we were trying to save the building that's in the northeast corner of the site. It's currently a garage building that was built, I believe, in the 40s or 50s. Uh, this redesign does not allow for that to stay, so we're now tearing that building down, but the current plan uh, contemplates us salvaging material from that building and from the building on the southeast corner. So salvaging brick, the historic timbers inside the building and the roof truss system and repurposing those materials to build um, a pavilion similar to this, just with some precedent imagery of what we're thinking. Um, it's hard to know exactly what that'll be until we actually get in an inventory exactly what's in those buildings, but it'll be roughly 1,200 square feet, still creating the pocket park as an amenity for the bike trail that we had before. Those, the intent of all of those things has stayed the same. So we can, I don't know how you wanna go through this, we can go through, this has the previous site plans, previous elevations, um, and then obviously the new ones also that are, are before you. I think it's been in the package, so hopefully everyone's had a chance to review and formulate okay. questions. So I would open it up for questions and I'll start. Um, the exposed uh, facade at the uh, parking level underneath, yep. what is the material there? So we have not defined exactly how we were treating it because we partially went down a conversation with you guys because we see it differently in different places. But it's obviously at this point exposed concrete. I mean, it's part of the foundation wall system. Um, it can be painted. Um, I think that you'd have to do it correctly if you tried to continue down the hardy board material. Um, that's doable also. I, I don't have a strong preference. It would not stay exposed concrete, I can tell you that. Um, but we partially wanted your all's feedback because 
I assumed you would have a, an opinion. You do have that condition, obviously, on all six ends. Okay, uh, would it be possible to make that concrete exposed aggregate? Um, I don't know why it would it be. We definitely talk to the contractor and see if that was an option. So we could have some color to that concrete? Yeah, I'm mean, happy to ask them whatever your all's preference is. I think that there, there's a cost to finishing it no matter what. We just want something that will hold up well over time and wear well and you know, not be something that's unpleasant to look at. But okay. that's, that is definitely an interesting idea for sure. Fortunately, we've come to know a concrete guy pretty well here in town, so. <laughs> yes, is that Jerry? Please go ahead. Uh, this is Jerry. Um, just as an FYI, I'm only getting like every other word of everyone speaking, so I probably won't have too much input from this in, just so you're aware. Okay, thank you. Do you have any other specific questions that we can address for you? Uh, no, no. I, from what I can glean, I think everything's on the table so far. So no questions from mine yet. Great, thank you. Other questions or comments? Otherwise, thoughts for the uh, the exposed foundation at the parking decks? Uh, Dick had suggested possibly an exposed aggregate. Uh, it sounds as if everyone's in agreement that some sort of treatment there would be preferable to just Absolutely. exposed raw concrete. Yep. Uh, that, to me, seems like something that could be left for you to figure out what your preference would be and okay. then bring that back for staff review. Can you bring the same bottom color of material to the aggregate so it doesn't look like a striped building? Because um, right now you go white, brown, white. Right. Just kind of. Yeah, I would think so. It looks cheap. Like, yeah. If no, you I bring that bottom brown material straight down, that would be acceptable. Sure. Yeah, we're, we're open. Um, our, my previous experience was that you all actually are good at engaging in kind of the discourse of, you know, what's going to work well. So, um, I figured I could show it some way, and then it would probably end up having a conversation about what it was going to be, so we might as well just have the conversation. I guess as, as I'm looking at the uh, perspective that shows the corner of the building with that foundation exposed, that material goes under different colored materials of the building. So trying to match one piece, it's going to then clash Right. At other pieces, and it's probably not financially feasible to do multiple different color or material treatments to that, unless it's just paint. Um, so picking something that's maybe complementary to everything and just running that throughout uh, seems like an efficient way to do it. Yeah. If there was a paint product that is a more robust product that would seal the foundation and hold up over time and then they could match it to the darker brown color, would that be an option color-wise if it matched and if then it was kind of made to deal with meeting up with the ground and dealing with snow being against it and such? Uh, so leaving the concrete and just painting it with a good paint uh, and then matching the colors of the material above it to me, that would be acceptable as long as it's well maintained. Right. Uh, and if it fades at all, touch that up to keep it consistent. Other thoughts from the board? Charlie, this might be a good one for you. Yeah, I'd rather not see Hardy on that part because I agree. it's going to fail. I'd I agree rather not that. see Hardy on any of the building. It's got problems and it's not user friendly with silica dust and yeah. the new rules. So the fact that you picked it over LP smart side, which has the exact same look, doesn't make sense to me. So I'm not positive that we'll end up with Hardy. We're looking at the other choices. You know, I think it'll just be Don't a- Don't you have to be positive when you come? This is my first meeting. It'll be a cementitious product. The Hardy product. is what we've shown you to date, but I think they're comparable products between the different manufacturers that look yeah. exactly the same they're between LP and Hardy. To, to address that point, Charlie, the 
Typically, things are submitted with actual product samples. If they deviate from that, the request is to run that past staff. Okay. If it's a close enough match uh, and staff feels it's acceptable, they'll be able to approve that. If there are concerns, they would then bring it back to us again. Yeah, we've had more issues from the installation side up here. I think, you know, um, the further north we find that we go, there's just less of a preference if people want to work with the Hardy product. So um, I think it's really partially who our contractor ends up choosing to do that scope. Do you think that that paint option would be a reasonable approach then? In I think it's the a better idea, okay. honestly. I know it's the cheapest idea, but as long as you maintain it, like yeah. suggested by the board, that's critical not that you buy the cheapest paint you can find no it wouldn't be we're a long-term holder so that just kind of penny wise pound foolish for two years from now uh, sorry i don't know much about your yeah. business so yeah, yeah no our, our intention is to to build it and own it so okay but if we're agreeable to that and can just agree to that being a solution then we're comfortable with that going in as a condition comments concerns from the board Uh, I'd make a motion to approve as presented with uh, staff review on the, um, the exposed foundation. We have a motion and a second from Dick. Uh, any additional discussion? Jerry, anything from your end? Uh, nothing so. Right, so we have a motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Right. Motion is approved. Thank you. Pam, is that you on the line too? It is, yes. Sorry, I came in a little bit late, but I am here. Great, thank you. Right, so that was approved. Steve. I believe the motion was for submittal for staff approval. So, great. Good. So I think that was approved. Great. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you all. I appreciate your time. Take care of yourselves during these crazy times. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll take a brief break while we shuffle presentation parties in the council chambers. All right, if everyone is ready, we'll move to item 3.2, the proposed addition to Rewind Bar, located at 1002 Michigan Avenue. Uh, we are trying to do this so folks can hear on the phone, so please use the microphone if you can give us an, an introduction and brief description on what you're proposing, please. Absolutely. So my name is Tyler Chapa with A. Chapa Construction, uh, the general contractor for this proposed project. Um, what we're proposing is approximate 455 square foot addition to the existing building's west side that would take over their existing patio area for seating of their exterior bar. Um, this would enclose the staff member that would be sitting directly in this new egress path. Um, that would be counting patrons exiting and entering. Um, it would also shield off that back patio from the street side of Michigan Avenue. Okay. Uh, it was noted somewhere in the package that uh, the current building is over the uh, property line 
and that the addition would be set back a foot. That's Is that correct? correct? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. On the survey that's in the packet now, that um, was updated. And so the existing building uh, rests one foot into the Michigan Avenue right away. And the new building is proposed to be at the property line. So it will step back one foot compared to what's there existing. And I think the current plans and elevations don't really show that offset? The current ones do not. Um, we had our survey done and it showed us a little late after the original plans were, were made. Um, so we would have to update that prior to pulling a building permit. And is the thought just to wrap that cornice element back at that one foot jog? Correct. Okay. One of my comments had been that the, the cornice element, as it gets extended for the additional length, um, seem to be getting very long and kind of sandwichy uh, with multiple stripes. Mm -hmm. But I think that one foot offset, if the, uh, the steps to the cornice wrap around that foot, that'll actually break it up nicely. Yeah, that'll wrap around or it'll be on the mm -hmm. south elevation of the addition and with, on the west as well Yeah, on that property line. Good. Other questions or comments from the board? Um, Bob. And I just had a question on the elevate, south elevation. It looks like that wrapping of the cornice doesn't happen on the far west end. Yeah, that is the old drawings that were not updated since we had the... Um, okay. Yeah. Questions? We can go to Dick. You're right. Uh, the the uh, south elevation shows a red columns at the corner and at two at one window and the next space over shows brick is it possible that that same red column could be where that brick column is yes that is a, a possibility we just did this as the, the red columns the material would be a pvc trim material which is what we're looking to make that um the bottom two and a half foot wainscoting underneath those windows so we're looking to match that um, we could really cover the brick with that as well. Good. Dick, the, the brick column is existing, mm -hmm. and then that first column to the west, the red one, is also existing. Okay. And it looks as if there's some nice detailing on that brick pier. Just looking at that on Google Maps right now. I don't know if we can zoom in on that previous image at all, Steve. The... Um the, the, the picture or the... That one, if we can zoom in just a bit there. Or maybe a lot. <laughs> in our opinion, it matched up with the, the brick above it quite nicely. And, you know, from the addition, that would be mainly and mostly a PVC and wood type building instead of a brick with the original building. So I don't know if you can see on the screen, Dick, that first pier... There is some uh, like corbeling and accent piece at the top below the cornice line. Mm -hmm. It just looks like a foreign element in that elevation. <laughs> oh, this might be nice. That's the existing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One area I want the board to be aware of, if I may, is that the owner of Rewind now is without any revenue streams. So the additions to this project may, in fact, force him to not move forward with this. Um, anything that we're adding. Um, he's asking for forgiveness on the green siding on the east side of the building, you know, given the revenue streams that. And if we were able to adjust replacing the bottom two and a half foot wainscoting on the existing buildings, south elevation and east elevation, that would be much appreciated. Um, but I'm sure that would have to go through board review. That's what I was looking at too. Thanks, Chad. So Dick, I don't know if that changes your thought on turning that pier red or not. It does assist, but I'm still convinced that it would look better overall if that were the red instead of the brick. 
Okay. And are, are you thinking to cover it with a ramp or just paint it? What is the red material? It's a PVC. It's almost like a plastic lumber material. Um, it's pretty easy to fasten, um, paint, keep up with maintenance. Um, very durable. So that's what we're looking to install. And follow that same wainscoting, that two and a half foot trim along the bottom underside or underneath the windows. We'd have that material. That way it can really hold up to, to snow, salt, shoveling, things of that nature in the future. And if okay. you, uh, you would have to take the corbel off in order to make it look like a piece of red vertical board. Correct. And you can do that okay? We would, there would be some saw cutting involved. I would have to take a look at it, a closer look at it, is to it see how that would be. What's that? Is a brick pillar structural? That would also have to be determined, but at this time, if I If it's am, not, could you remove it and just not have one in that area? It's possible, yes. It might save but, you cost. Then removing it and installing, yes. And we get rid of the look that he doesn't like, which I agree. I mean, or possibly, is it possible to paint it if if it comes down to absolutely requiring that? I don't care. But then again, I just want to note again that the no <laughs> revenue streams that he does not have. Yep. Yeah. Other than that, I think I like the design. Okay. Jerry and Pam. Any uh, comments from the phone lines? I'm here. Any thoughts or questions on this submittal? I don't. I have to be honest. I've got a very um, crackly connection. I can hear most but not everything that you're saying. So I'm just trying to hang on to what I can hear. It's the first time trying this. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Marcus. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is more of a, a technical question. Since um, they have to resubmit plans, are we charging them the $100 resubmittal fee? The only time... Um, am I... The only time they get charged a resubmittal fee is if the application, like the last one, hasn't been here in some time. So, so anything that gets resubmitted is just a request from the board to have them come back. So no, they're not charged a fee at that time. Good, thank you. Is anyone ready to make a motion? Before you make a motion, um, I can't hear the Technical difficulties. <laughs> So anyway, I'll ask my question. The question, and I understand that uh, funding is a concern, but the question was why there was no windows on that small west side facing the alley. The original, so the, the west side of the addition you're referring to? Yes. yes. The original um, idea with that west side is it would be right on the property line, making that a fire rated wall. So we were just going to prevent that from being glass at all. Um, when we had the survey done, we found out we had an additional approximate foot beyond the fence line. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, on, it's noted on there somewhere what we actually had. So what we wanted to do was just leave that foot just for possible green space or landscaping if needed. So, and that would force that wall not to be a firewall. So then we just kind of left it as we originally had it in the plans was to not include a window in that for that reason. And I believe Dick has a question. Uh, no question. I'm moving that the uh, that the project be approved as submitted with the correction of the one brick column be made into a column that looks like the others. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? And our. Jerry and Pam, are you clear on that motion? I heard the second. I didn't hear all of the original motion. The original motion was to approve as submitted, but to do something to the brick pier uh, on the south elevation uh, to make it look more like the other red piers. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Steve? Um, and then a resubmittal. With, did, did you want something with the cornice on the offset? To, th that's a good point. We, we should have that resubmitted to staff with the corrected plans and elevations showing that one foot offset. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think as it's described, everyone understands what should be submitted or how it's going to be constructed. So that being the case, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Great. I think we are approved with that one. Thank you very much. And we will get to our next group. Yeah, that's nice, Tyler. I, I think I think the one nice thing there, I, I don't know if it was mentioned or not, but that east uh, elevation is being changed to uh, a siding that's more yeah. brownish in nature, so that'll look nice along 10th Street too. Thanks, Tyler. All right, we are moving to item 3.3. Well, we make sure we're complying with all the CDC requirements. Um, so we are moving to the uh, resubmittal of the new Transpo mini storage buildings at 1210 South 10th Street. And if uh, for the presenters, if you can use the microphone so the folks who are on the phone right. can hear as well. And I believe we've got uh, Ron Becker calling in on the phone also. So with that, if you'd reintroduce yourselves and uh, give us your updates, please. Very good. Steve Pesky, Distinctive Design Studio. I'm here joined with uh, John Becker from Transpo Mini Storage and Ron on the phone. Uh, from our previous um, discussion and submittal, uh, we've made some changes in regards to uh, some of the comments uh, that were made by the board and uh, specifically Dick Lindy at that time. And also with working with the city, uh, reduction of size of the building, uh, increasing some of the setbacks, some of the proportions uh, reduced slightly overall, uh, mainly starting out with the Kentucky, Kentucky Avenue elevation uh, of the center uh, element being raised and adding another brick uh, column element uh, along this facade. Uh, other major items uh, that were adjusted from previous conversation were along the alleyway of uh, introducing a new or introducing a different color panel uh, along that facade to break up the long elevation. Uh, so adding five elements along that elevation. Okay. So questions or feedback? Charlie, we had quite a go around with this last time. Um, they've uh, done quite a bit to improve the, the aesthetic of this. It was more scaled back than this last time around. Uh, they have added quite a few elements. Um, we had also asked on that Kentucky Avenue elevation uh, to do something to uh, increase the massing at the middle of the building, do something just to give it a little more uh, break to the, the horizontal line of the roof line. It was very long and continuous there. Uh, appears they've done that. This question on the alley elevation, mm -hmm. the spacing of those brick pier or the, the alternate material piers aren't consistent. Is there a reason for that? Uh, we've resolved that. I think that was an error uh, in this set of plans that came through. So. But four equal siding panels with the brick between? 
it's actually siding in between. Darker siding? Darker yeah. siding in between, yes. But equal spacing across uh, the four light colors uh, siding elements. So Dick, I would bring that one back to your attention that that puts the darker sided element right in the middle again. Alley side, correct. I have an updated one if you'd like to see. Sure. For those on the phone, we're now being shown a paper exhibit that I'm afraid we can't share with you. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Steve. I don't see it. Ah, so you, you have changed the spacing. There's an additional dark element. So it is fo following the classical order, Dick, to, to not put a column in the middle. That picture is the same as the one we printed. I don't see any difference. Yeah, yeah this is different. Uh, before. Okay, this is the same. From what we have. The one that's on here. This is what was there before. Okay. This guy was going to be centered, so they've changed that. So now it's like this. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's good. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I would like to move for approval of the project as submitted. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Or from on the phones? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. You guys aren't quick enough. <laughs> that was two eyes from the phone, I take it? Yes. yes. Great, thank you. Thank and you. I, and uh, did we do opposed? Sorry, I'm thrown off. Anyone opposed? I think it was unanimous eyes, so it is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you guys later. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thank you. Steve, can you give us an update on anticipation for the April 13th meeting and whether under the new state guidelines, if we are non-essential, therefore should not be meeting? Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. Sorry. I'm not sure at this point in time what the decision is going to be. Um, as soon as I find out, I'll let everyone know in advance so everyone has a feeling. Um, I think there could be some things that were possibly going to be submitted. You know, So if we are regularly going to meet, I would say the answer is yes. But as I find out um, in the next couple of days, I'll let you guys know. Great. And just feedback from the board in terms of willingness to meet in the current situations, given what the city's doing today to try to, to limit exposure, keep the group to under 10 in this, this space. Uh, are people still comfortable uh, either calling in or being here in person? Seeing nodding heads for the most part. So if the, the mayor and the, the governor don't shut us down, uh, then it sounds like this is still uh, an option from our end. Great, thank you. Any other comments or business? If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'm, I'm oh. not sure if you're still speaking, so I apologize if I'm interrupting. But yeah, from this end, uh, and I know it's a technology issue that we'll have to work out. If we do the conference call again, hopefully we'll find a way um, that uh, will be a little more conducive for the folks on our end because Pam and I would uh, definitely agree. It's just hard to hear uh, the, the speakers. And I think once we're in a room where everyone is maybe dialing into the same line and on a phone, it might be easier, but today is very difficult. Thanks for that feedback. And I'm being told that uh, they will be trying to take care of that. Thank you guys for calling in. So motion to adjourn. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion. I hear a second. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We are adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Hopefully see you on the 13th. Thank you. Where do you work, Charlie? I own the construction. Which way? Wait for the yeah, yeah. So I know hey, you're, you're welcome. Pretty close to this in Kentucky. <laughs> Thanks, you guys, for helping out. Appreciate it. I'm surprised you guys allow it. There's storage by you go up so right in the normal. Yeah. Two blocks from where we're supposed to spend like, millions of dollars. Usually these speakers, but these cameras. Yeah, like, where do you want to go? Why don't we have a choice? I figured it out. We can do it too. Thanks, Bob. Stay, stay well. Right. I mean, you, you just bought Reline Bar in order to put up that huge area, and you're spending all that money, and then through, just across the road of Indiana, you're allowing them to put up a 200 foot long storage building. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I just think it's weird. Why would you do that? Because it, uh, it's their property, they can do what they want. Well, they're going to do something.